What's up y'all, welcome back to another episode. Happy Thanksgiving week, happy holidays. Devin and I got something exciting for you guys, man. Next year, 2021, we have something big planned. We're gonna put together a bucket list fishing trip and we want to invite some of y'all. It's gonna be limited on how many we can get out to come meet us and fish with us. So if you want some information on that, check the link down in the description. Come fishing with us next year. Aside from that, today we are actually getting out on Caddo Lake, absolutely legendary lake. It feels like I've seen countless larger influencers that have visited this spot just to take pictures in this little area, this tree tunnel called Government Ditch. So needless to say, it's been on our list of lakes to hit for a long time, right on the Texas-Louisiana border. We finally made it out. And although the fishing was a little tough and we didn't have too much time, it was literally on our drive back from Florida to Dallas, we did get on some fish and I caught a new species in today's video. So as luck would have it, we did not get skunked on Caddo Lake at our first outing. We were super thrilled just to soak in the sights of this place. So hopefully I can show you guys through some of the B-roll in today's video, but without further ado, Let's take y'all to the ramp. We're gonna hop in the Old Town Canoes, our favorite kayaks. They're linked in the description. You guys know the deal. And get today's video started. We'll see you there. All right, y'all, I have got the Mondo Kit Pro. Devin and Zeke are just launched. We are here. Let's go ahead and get in the water. We found a ramp right next to the uh, government ditch which is the cool sight everyone wants to see here, that tree tunnel. Super sick. I don't really have anything rigged up right now. She's just gonna be going with one rod and reel, that way there's not too much chaos <laughs> with uh, sticks everywhere with the dog and everything. So I'm carrying the bulk of the equipment and we don't really have all the gear necessary to fish this particular spot, but I will tell you about that as we go. This is the PDL 106, probably gonna make quick work of this place. I'm pretty pumped. She's on the autopilot 120. Literally a kayak with spot locks, like a miniature bass boat. <laughs> this is going to be a quick session, by the way. We are just on our way back from a Florida trip and we had to stop and hit this. It's like three and a half hours from home. And so we could definitely come hit this place again. If we can get this video to over 1000 likes, which is pretty dang high for my videos, we'll do a full on send, maybe a multi-day trip and bring the bass boat out here, which would be so crazy. So drop a like on this video if you would like to see that. Look at this place, freaking beautiful, dude. We do not see trees like this in our area. Anyways. I'm going to be quiet. We're going to get to a spot and start fishing. Drop my rudder down right there. Now I have steering over here. There's another knob that goes on here that I never installed either. So anyways, we are on the water. Hey, Zeke. <laughs> oh, are we in the boat lane? Might be. To your right. Flying. <laughs> uh oh, round two. Skirt. Them boats going crazy out here. This is sick. Trailers. All right, let's open this thing up and kick things off. I think I'm going to start with a uh, crankbait. It also has a spinner bait in here, which I'm hoping because it's so uh not clear water oh perfect i was just hoping it was going to be like a shad coloration that's fantastic honestly i could just throw the spinner bait but i've got um i've got this combo right here this little spinning setup uh like i say Devin and i didn't bring too much gear <laughs> so we took a trip out to florida mainly fishing salt water so we've got limited stuff so i didn't bring hardly any like just standard bait caster setups or anything Literally, we have one, and she's gonna, Devin's gonna be using it. So she's got a uh, chatterbait tied on. I am fishing only lures out of this box, and I'm gonna start by covering water here. We've never fished this lake before, but I think a crankbait's gonna work out well. In fact, I'll cover this fishing report that I just read on the way here. It's literally updated as of uh, less than a week ago on how the fish have been biting, and they did mention crankbaits as well. So let me go ahead and get this thing rigged up. It says the report is good. As of November 4th, 2020, water lightly stained at 65 degrees. Largemouth bass are good in shallow water working jerk baits, white spinners, and skirted jigs in three to five feet. Lucky for us, that seems to be the majority of this place. Texas rig plastic worms and medium crankbaits are productive in deep water near timber and vegetation exactly what we are around so i don't think we are going to run into any problems there that's about it for the bass fishing report though we got to do the whole thing out here we got to go through all the eyelets all of our reels were nicely packed and off of the rods for the return trip from florida 
a lot of spider webs on this lake. There is definitely fish hitting the surface where we're at. We just don't know exactly what they are. Let me get this thing rigged up. This is another thing I like about the old towns. They've got these front facing rod holders, which you wouldn't think you'd use all the time, right? Because it's like, okay, those are going to be in my way. Well, the thing is, it's perfect for when you're rigging up or I got to get out of this boat lane. I'm not really in it, but I'm kind of on the edge and here comes somebody. I'm just going to scurry over here. Yeah, so you might think a front facing rod holder is no good, but then when you go to unhook a fish and you want to set your rod down somewhere, or you go to rig a bait, you realize it's like the best thing ever. All right, we're making the first few casts. We're seeing fish jump everywhere. Starting off with the mini banger, which I believe dives one to three feet, which sounds good because I was looking at the chart on this thing, like the depth chart, and I'm pretty sure almost this whole thing is like five feet deep. I mean, the maximum depth here is 20 feet and it's only in a couple areas like there's not much to this place that has too much depth from what i from what i read oh yeah yeah literally that makes sense yep my spinning rod doesn't even hit the bottom i'm pretty sure that is the depth of this entire place give or take a couple a couple small areas where it gets down to like 20 feet so this crank is perfect one that dives down five to six feet might be better to hit bottom but i'm not sure what the bottom is down here so if it's like if it's like a muddy bottom then you're going to just get caught up if it's like if it's not, I would imagine it's a muddy bottom. So you might just be getting caught and your square bill is going to come up with all kinds of mud all over it. So this is literally the perfect depth. So we're just going to fish right here for a moment and then we're going to move it down and showcase more of this place. I think I just hit the bottom right there. By the way, I'm not just like an idiot sitting in the middle of this thing. Like you can definitely tell when a boat's coming by, you got at least 30 second heads up. They're all ripping through here. So I got plenty of time to get out of their way. That way is the government ditch, which is like the tunnel, which would be cool, but they'll probably be running through there. I think it's kind of like part of the running lane maybe now that I see people cruising or we can go left and just explore. It really doesn't matter. I think it's all going to fish almost exactly the same. It's all going to kind of be like, like the same depth, almost the same structure. So we just got to kind of key in on where they might be. Y'all been getting on them today? It's my first time here. I figure a lot of people try and come through here and fish this, but. You yeah. Western? Yeah, that's me. No way. <laughs> I recognize you. We're on our way back from Florida. I, I, we gotta come back out here though. This place is pretty dope. Yeah, everything is pretty much five feet. Like. Oh no. Oh no, I didn't get that. It's like 12, 16, 17 feet in the river. In the river, okay. Gotcha. All right, y'all, we have made our way back into Government Ditch. The place is so sick. Absolutely beautiful, man. You guys have got to come check this place out. The launch is literally not far from where we are at. I'll go ahead and overlay a little bit of a map that kind of showcases exactly how to get here in case you guys want to check this out for yourself and either come fish it or maybe even just do a little kayak stroll like Devin and myself are doing and just enjoy the scenery because it is that beautiful. Also, y'all, the record for the largemouth here is uh, over 16 pounds, 16.17 pounds caught on a Sanko. So if you want to catch a giant, you might just throw a sank out here so we don't have too much more time out on the water we still got a three plus hour drive home and we've already made most of the trek from Anna Maria Island in Florida so we're gonna go ahead tie on a couple more lures out of the Mondo kit and get to ripping All right, y'all, I think it's time to break out the spinner bait. The clarity is calling for it. Basically, these blades on here, we've got one willow, one Colorado, silver, and gold. It's gonna look like a school of fish all swimming together and hopefully get these bass attention despite the clarity with all that extra flash. So I'm gonna rig that thing up and start casting that out before dark. Oh, got one. Oh, all right. <laughs> it's a pickerel I got a pickerel I'm not sure how you grab these things but it looks like it's got some sharp teeth how's the gills yeah is this a pickerel ah. all right well I was trying to show them to you guys <laughs> well we caught a mondo out of the mondo kit <laughs> And that 
wraps things up, y'all. Devin and I definitely want to go back. With enough likes and support on this video, we will definitely be hitting Caddo Lake in the near future, probably by boat in the hot tamale. But an absolute surprise with that chain pickerel on the spinnerbait on our way out. I believe it's a chain pickerel. That's what everyone was telling me, so I'm rolling with it. Next time we get out there, though, we would love to get on some big bass, and we know there's so much potential out there at Caddo Lake. So make sure to subscribe to the channel, turn those notifications on, and we'll catch you guys on future episodes. Peace. Oh.